All right, Ricky Rochelle, thank you for joining me for this interview, my friend. It's been a while and uh, it's good to connect, good to talk to you. So uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And I just want to say it's nice to uh, formally meet you. We've been texting for years, I think, and uh, never met face to face. So this is nice. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. I guess, uh, yeah. yeah, you're right. First face to face. So it's been, really? it's been a long time, though. I think we've been in contact since probably the first, you know, um, maybe it was around the time of uh, Cannibal Island, 7-inch, I think was when we... Uh, that long? while it's almost 10 years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i've known about you for a long time I, i'm ever since uh, project 27 was my introduction well i'm a fan of yours too so it's good to be here on your uh, little show yeah yeah thanks man well um one of the main goals i have is to let people know about your new solo album that just came out and uh give you a chance to talk about it and something that was really cool and interesting about it uh is that you released the album in a series of singles which you know, it was kind of like something I do, but you did it in a way that I think was unique and you really made each single special, you know, in, the, in terms of the artwork and the presentation. And you also released some really great music videos for the singles before the album dropped. So what was that experience like for you? Uh, the experience was great. Um, I just released my album uh, under my name, Ricky Rochelle, So Far So Good. My first real solo delving into, I had something called... Uh, Unleash the Demos, which was a bunch of uh, essentially Young Shells demos. Uh, I put that out first on a cassette on memorable but not honorable tapes. But now, fast forward a little bit, uh, we're further into this pandemic. And, you know, I was getting I was getting a little bored musically. Me and the boys uh, weren't hanging because of obvious reasons. We didn't want to get each other sick and stuff. We can't be rocking on stage. So uh, I put out a solo record. I wrote and recorded it, uh, basically lived in the studio. And it was... Uh, it was a great experience. I was I was glad to have some good artwork to go along with what I felt was uh, a strong collection of songs. And um, it mostly just came out of boredom and, and need for action. So uh, so I whipped it up and uh, here it is. It's coming out uh, on Eccentric Pop Records. That'll be the vinyl. Plus we're doing uh, CDs, tapes, and A-tracks. So it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a good year. That's great, man. Yeah, I've always been very impressed with the way that you put out your work because you all, you have very high quality standards uh, for everything. You know, down obviously the songwriting is very good, uh, and the production quality is always very very clean and and uh, pristine and full, satisfying. And then you know the artwork that you've chosen, everything's very professional. Uh, is that just something that's kind of you know, always been a goal for you. Do you have any help or like anybody who kind of oversees what you do? Or is that just, uh, you know, what your intention was all along? I think I'm my own overseer. Uh, you know, I grew up with stuff that sounded pretty clean. Uh, I was talking uh, to the guys last night about uh, one of my all-time favorite records, which is uh, Blink-182, Enema of the State. And, you know, that's a clean record. Um, but that's when I got into music around 99, 2000 into pop punk and stuff. And the records were clean back then. And uh, I wanted to carry along that tradition because I like the sound. I like how that pops. And uh, I think there's a time and a place for garage music, but I wouldn't exactly say it's, um, you know, completely of the times now. I mean, maybe it is, but I think it's been around for a while. And I think uh, I think some people like you and, and me look forward to cleaner hi-fi recordings. So uh, yeah, I got high standards and uh, I guess it's a little harder that way because you got to really perform well and you know so yeah that's uh that's my story on that yeah i can relate to that for sure because i i mean not my introduction into punk music was already at a time when the production was pretty clean and i think i mean you have something to be proud of with each release because you know you you really kind of check off all the boxes in terms of the the quality and uh I, you know, that's something I've always admired about you and, and all the bands that you've been in. Um, so speaking of quality. Thank you. Buddy. Thank you for the kind words there. Oh, yeah, of course, man. This is just going to be a compliment test, basically. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, the next thing I want to talk about, you know, that's related to the high quality of your work is uh, this Yeti in the Snow video, which kind of came out of nowhere. And as far as our scene goes, that's probably one of the highest production values I've seen in a music video for a long time. I mean, this is stop motion animation, looks very professional, 
Uh, it had to be a pretty involved process, a big investment of your resources. So can you talk about like, what were your goals for that? And did it turn out the way that you'd hoped and, and everything? I had to sell a, a couple of organs to get that one done. Um, now, yeah, Yeti in the Snow music video. Sure, I'm proud of it. I think it's great. Uh, I think the reason why it looks so good, it was directed by a man named Thomas R. Smith. He was the main animator of uh, Robot Chicken. I'm sure you've heard of that on uh, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim. Uh, he did work on SpongeBob SquarePants and The Simpsons. So he's been around. He's cool. Look him up. He's got his own IMDb. That's how I knew I could trust him. And uh, yeah, he did a, a really kick-ass job on that video and uh, made it pop, so I was happy with it. Is that guy into punk at all? I get the sense he is, yeah. He, he felt like that was a good project for him to work on early on. I sent him the lyrics, I sent him the song, and he was into it. Cool, man. Well, that's a good segue into what I want to talk about next, which is lyrics. Um, it's something that's cool about your work is... You know, we, you and I are both pretty, uh, I would consider us to be traditionalists in terms of the ty type of pop punk we like, you know, uh, but you put your own spin on it, you know, and, you, and the lyrics that you write and the topics that you write are always kind of just seem fresh to me and unique um, and kind of each new thing you come out with is a bit surprising in some ways. Like, I mean, on your solo album, songs like Getty in the Snow, Don't Put the Chimp in Charge, a lot of these have kind of these fun, uh, almost like family friendly vibes, but then you've got some other songs with other, you know, different topics. And um, it's kind of all over the place, but it all works and it all it kind of, they all complement each other well. So when you're doing lyrics in general and for this solo album, um, what did you have in mind? Is Was there a, a type of lyrical goal that you had or did you just have a bunch of songs and put them all together? My lyrical goal was to make the lyrics good. I went to Nashville a couple years ago, 2019. I went to a song camp. I learned a lot about uh, music and songwriting, specifically lyrics. I took that to heart. I used to write uh, melody first, lyrics second. Now I almost exclusively write the other way, lyrics first, melody second. Sometimes I, I got the melody, but I then I flesh out the lyrics right away, and then I flesh out the rest of the song. Uh, so yeah, uh, my goal is just to make the lyrics uh, good. And, um, you know, I was living in a couple of different recording studios. I say living, of course, I wasn't living in the couch. Although one of my engineers is living on his couch these days. But um, so we, uh, we did, uh, I went to the recording studio and I let the engineers play on it. And uh, what I'm trying to say is I went to a couple of different studios. So it was kind of recorded like singles, more like that and less like, um, less like an album, but I knew the, the songs were going to string along into each other. So um, you know, I think the variety comes along with all that. Right on. Yeah, I remember conversations we've had in the past about your uh, lessons learned from songwriting camps and, and experiences with, you know, professional songwriters. And I really have to commend you for the attention that you put into developing your own craft, you know, because there is an art to it. And some of it's instinctual, but the more you learn, you know, the better off you are. So it's, it's inspiring to me. It makes me want to, you know, learn more. I mean, I think in punk rock, there's, it's a lot about the image, but uh, I don't know. I've always been more about the craft. Like I've, I've been a, I think I've been a pretty creative guy my whole life. Like I used to make like animation when I was a kid. You remember like the post-it pads? I used to make like flip books out of those. And I was just, I was an only child. So I had nobody to hang out with. So I did like art projects basically. And, uh, you know, I graduated to music and or evolved to music. And, uh, and so it's, uh, it's my main passion and hobby in life. So I'm proud that, you know, other people can see that and uh, enjoy it. Yeah, I think that's the thing that connects like you and I as friends and just people in general in the scene is just having that personality type. Because when you're a creative type of person, it is who you are, you know, and then like we kind of gravitate towards each other. Well, what you were saying earlier is a good uh, little transition into my next question. Um, I've always seen you as somebody who, you know, still wears the uniform of the pop punk, you know, soldier, but in your craft, you're always reaching higher levels, almost as if your, your goal is to transcend, you know, the Ramones core label, the, the pop punk label in a way. Uh, and a lot of the demos that you've sent me, um, you know, I could totally envision them in a different style or genre. So is this something that you're working towards as a songwriter is just being more versatile and being able to, to play more styles and 
uh, you know, are you going to continue to primarily do pop punk or do you have some other plans? Well, I think, I think pop punk has, uh, is my thing and it's certainly become my staple. Uh, I do actually write other songs sometimes, uh, that aren't, uh, one, two, three, four type of songs. And you probably heard some of them, uh, but I don't release that, you know, as, as Rochelle's projects, but that, that kind of stimulates my mind and, and keeps me growing and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I'm, you know, I love the Ramones. So I love that traditionalism and, and the queers, you know, doing stuff like the Ramones did essentially and, and doing their own thing and weasel and all that stuff. Um, but I like to, I like to do my own thing. I like to be unique, and I, but I like to bring it into sort of the, the pop punk template. Cause I feel like that's what greats like, you know, fat Mike does and, and, and you know, other, other people along the way, uh, I think you got to take a little bit from here, a little bit from there. I think it makes it cool. Uh, I think it makes it unique. And I think every time someone says, Oh, they're a really bad pop punk band. It's kind of because they're not going anywhere besides the little box that they know. Or, Love. I, you know, I don't know, but I, I love it all. So that's, well, I think uh, that's well said, man. I, you do have to kind of push outside of the, the boundaries a little bit to come up with something fresh and unique and satisfying. But I appreciate about you that you do include what I consider to be like the meat and potatoes of the pop punk recording, uh, you know, chunky, thick guitars, nice distortion. Uh, your drumming has always been really, really satisfying to me. <laughs> you know, just you're tight, you're a tight player, and the tempos are fast. And I like short songs. And I know you and I have that in common too, um, the way we compose. It's kind of like, we like very concise uh, arrangements and stuff, so. Yeah, and you know, that's that's actually a difference now that you say, you're saying, how are you gonna change the songwriting? I actually am gonna try to write a couple songs that are a little bit longer, you know, like the 235 mark. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it, two minutes and about has been the sweet spot for me, but uh, I'm gonna make them a little bit longer, but I, I like to do short intros, uh, you know, I don't mess around too much with solos and stuff. I, I like to write bridges with lyrics because I think that's a little more satisfying and challenging. So, uh, you know, I have my methods. Yeah, man, I, I can relate to that. And I think, yeah, when, once you commit to adding a bridge to the song and you start to think about it in terms of kind of a traditional rock song format, it, it can, it's kind of naturally gets longer that way, but it doesn't always have to. I mean, I, I know there's plenty of bad religion songs that have bridges that are still like a minute, you know, a minute and a half. But that's cool. I, I appreciate you talking about that. Um, oh, I'll still give everybody their pop punk candy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. I mean, I appreciate that. It's like it's like a candy that you that you know and love, but it's got a little bit of nuance to it, and it's definitely got your personality stamped onto it as well. So that's well, cool. Thanks. Yeah, and speaking of, I mean, your personality and your your life experience, this uh, seven inch that came out recently contained the single Haunted, which I know is a very personal song. Uh, and I think among punkers in particular, uh, having, you know, a history of challenges in your childhood and just being a creative person, being um, sensitive in general, where, you know, our, our community, in some ways it's unspoken, but there's like a, a bond through these hardships that we've been through. And I know that Haunted uh, is, is something that relates back to your childhood or young life and uh, development and how you know it impacted you. Could you speak about that at all? Uh, what would you- Yeah, I'll uh, speak about it. Um, you know, it's a heavy and dynamic uh, subject. I guess the first thing I wanna say is for me, you know, yeah, it was childhood, but unfortunately it was into adulthood until I completely cut it off. Uh, up to even you know about a year ago or honestly a little less <clears throat> so how somebody a close family member could be so cruel to their only son in this lifetime is beyond me uh you know i'm not here to completely bash there were certainly good times uh but unfortunately i remember of the, a lot of the uh bad intense times uh, some of that intensity maybe has spilled over into the music. Obviously, in that song, it's pretty intense. You could hear it and feel it. Uh, but I have a seriousness of purpose in life. So, you know, if I, can't, if I can't deal with someone or maybe they can't deal with me is a better way to put it. I, I, I got to cut them out. And I finally smartened up and, uh, and did that. Did writing that song and releasing it provide like a sense of closure for you and a, a sense of healing from that experience? 
it made me feel better. It made me feel like I was hopefully helping other people who have gone through it and they know that, okay, I hear someone who has struggled in this arena and, you know, I have too. So it's like, um, I hope it helps people. I think it helped me. It was cathartic and, you know, all that stuff. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't know if it's something I want to be defined by, but I think that it was, uh, it was a variety of topic and uh, certainly more personal than I usually do in the negative sense, I guess. It's kind of hard for me to explain here, obviously. I'm struggling a little, but, um, you know, the song is obviously very heavy and just talks about, you know, developing some anxieties and OCD from uh, people not treating you right. Um, yeah. But there's always hope in this world. So I think, uh, I think if you do have somebody like that in your life, um, keep them at a distance. That's my advice. I don't know. Yeah, man. Well, I have to commend you for including that as part of your catalog, you know, because it was a choice that you made. It, it, you could have just as e easily avoided addressing that, you know, in a public way or in a way that was, you know, deeply connected to your art that you make. I think it's very brave and very uh, respectable. And it's something that I can relate to myself, you know. Um, my I'm dad, sorry. sorry to hear that part. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had a, a, a better relationship with my dad, uh, you know, uh, as time went on, but there were definitely hard times. and, and um, you know, I've written songs about it as well, and I'm a dad myself, and I, you know, I'm, I'm aware that it's a difficult job, and and life is hard too, man. And especially for artists, I feel like, not like we're uniquely, you know, uh, capable of suffering or something like that. But I, I know that being a creative type, it, it kind of puts you in a position where you're going to feel things very deeply, and uh, it's gonna, it's gonna affect you. So I don't know. I like the song a lot, and I, I felt like you know, the B side with the Lillington's cover, everything kind of just flowed and it was a cool, it's a cool slice out of your catalog, man. You did a good job. Cool, thank you very much. And uh, Younger Shells are gonna be having some new music as well this year. So to follow up, we're gonna have an EP and hopefully the spring, uh, I won't say the record label just yet. And, uh, and then of course, we've uh, been talking about this uh, big session that we've had. And uh, once I stop, uh, sequencing it to death then uh, it'll be coming out and really excited about that and i think people are really gonna dig it right on well you keep saying things that are just perfect transitions into my next question so thank you for that uh the next thing i was going to talk to you about is young rochelle's and also like other side pro projects that have been going on like pep talk for example uh which i think is a great project um, but you're not involved in it. And so when that came out, how did you feel? And, and how do you feel in general about other members of the band kind of going off and, and exploring their own songwriting and their own paths? Uh, I feel good about it. You know, I feel like it's unfortunate that we couldn't um, fit those songs into our mold. I think, I think it was more of a thing on their end than my end. I, I think I thought the songs were workable, but, but I do think that uh, Rocky and Rookie brought them to a good light. And, and really made it their own versus trying to fit into our box. Um, and, you know, we played some of those songs, uh, you know, Sleepwalk Girl and a few others. And, and I like those songs. And um, I think they, they really hit it out of the park. You know, I, I think the proof is in the pudding there. Uh, they were on a lot of uh, top lists for 2021 and uh, deservedly, you know, of course I'm gonna say that in any sort of Rochelle's related project, but uh, I'm proud of them and, uh, and, you know, I just hope we all do well in our respective things and our things together. Yeah, well, it's cool to see it. I think you guys as a band have a lot in common as individuals. I mean, like the way that Rocky writes songs, for example, is it, you guys have things in common in terms of your songwriting instincts. And the fact that that album came out sounding crisp and clean and, and well-produced and the tightness of the songs, it's, it's cool. I mean, I know it can be challenging when you're in a band and there's three people who are capable of writing songs and, you know, how you steer the ship and, and who's sort of at the helm, you know, can be like kind of contentious potentially, but uh, it seems like you guys are navigating it all very well and, and we're getting to enjoy all the, you know, all the results. Yeah. And to be honest, we, we've had a bit of a break from each other because we've been apart for these couple of years, but as you see, we, we get together or at least digitally. I mean, you know, we're selling records and, uh, and things are cool. Um, you know, I look forward to the days when we could uh, meet and get in action again. 
but I think everyone's sort of uh, struggling in that way. I mean, it's uh, it's a little bit tricky right now still. So that's my opinion. Yeah, man. Um, so we've talked a little bit about your attitude towards improving your songwriting craft and how you experiment and how you, um, you know, look for opportunities to learn. Um, do you, you have uh, anything kind of on your list of goals as a songwriter that you want to definitely achieve in either an album or in a, you know, a young Rochelle's release, like something specific? Because for me, I, I always wanted to branch out as much as possible into other styles to say that at least I did it, you know, at least I tried it. Do you have anything similar like that for yourself? Uh, well, for me, getting back to what we're talking about before, I think it's, uh, I like to stretch, you know, the, uh, the craft of the box so far. Um, I think there's certain limits that I don't want to cross in, in Rochelle's projects. Cause I think that might be untrue mm -hmm. to the uh, nature of the, the whole theory. Um, but, you know, I mean, if we talk about goals, well, one very tangible goal that I that I attempt to do is write, edit and record one song a month, which is a pretty uh, dense goal. And it doesn't completely work out, but I usually get six or seven songs a year out of it. And it's pretty good uh, in my eyes. I'm cool with that. Um, I already got two for for January, so I'm doing good. This is probably a good time to say that uh, I have a solo single coming out on uh, Friday, February 4th. So don't know when this is coming out, but you can check out a new song by me then. But uh, my my real goal is, is to get a hit, you know, a hit of, of some sort or respect. Uh, you know, I don't even know what defines a hit. I mean, if we're talking top 40 or whatever, I don't know if there's any place for me there. But, but, but I want to have a real, real standout above what I already have in popularity yeah man yeah I, can, I i hear what you're saying um yeah and i think this will definitely come out in time for people to know that that's that single is on the way i'm glad you talked about your routines i try to do a little bit of something creative you know for about 30 minutes each day whatever that happens to be it used to just be songwriting now i'm doing a bunch of other stuff but i think it's good to have those routines and to have the discipline to keep yourself motivated and it sounds like you do have that uh and yeah, I see that you're, you know, you've got your eye on the prize and uh, you're, you're not going to just rest on your laurels. And that's inspiring to me because you're kind of reaching for a higher level. And uh, I think that's good. And as you're doing that, do you find that you're enjoying the process? Like, would you just do it for its own sake uh, anyway? Or is there, are there times when you feel like, ah, oh, I need to get to this point and I'm not there yet? Um, how do you deal with the kind of the aspirations versus like, you know, what results you're actually getting and does that factor into you know how yeah you're, how you're I, enjoy, I enjoy the process um some some days i wish i was just the result but other times especially when i'm meeting new people and working with new producers and engineers that's really what i love to absorb what they're doing so i learn new things um that's probably a uh um something in common that we both have you know i think we both like to keep our brains kind of stimulated and running I'm afraid, you know, I don't want my brain to ever get dull or anything like that, because that's like the biggest offense I, I can think of, I guess. You know, I want my, my heart to shine bright and my, uh, and my spirit to shine bright, too, and keep my brain sharp. So, um, yeah, I mean, I usually enjoy the journey. There's some days where it's repetitive and this and that, but uh, I go for all. Yeah, well said. Well said, man. Well, you've certainly gone for all uh, all along, and your recent output is a testament to that. I really love the this, um, solo album that you've done. I'm really looking forward to whatever the new year brings. I know that you're going to stay busy, and I want to just thank you also for being somebody who I can check in with uh, and you know remain in contact with because uh, you keep me motivated and inspired. And you know, I've done plenty of songs myself, but uh, without people like you to bounce ideas or to get feedback and, and have you in my corner, so to speak, I, you know, I'm not sure, you know, what I've kept going. I, don't know, you know. About you. I feel the same way about you. And I think that there's a good synergy there. So, you know, the ultimate honor that you would say that and, uh, and just know that it's, you know, right back at you. Like, I think uh, all the support has always been good. And, you know, sometimes I don't get it from some close corners, but I get it from you and people like you. So 
I'm always looking for that support as well as the inspiration. Yeah, that's, it's important too, because as you know, there's ups and downs in this game. And um, sometimes you do encounter like negativity or disappointments or setbacks or misunderstandings. And that can really, you know, deplete your inspiration <laughs> in some ways, but it's, it's important to be resilient. I think you've been resilient the whole time and, uh, and consistent and you're, you know, and you're excellent. It's all part of life and, uh, and I like to grow. So I think the growth is important. So you gotta, you gotta lose sometimes to win. Well, I think that's a good note to end on, man. I, I really appreciate you taking the time and I know you've been busy with uh, promoting the album and uh, yeah, I wish you the best. And of course we'll be in touch. And uh, thanks, if, if you have any closing words or shout outs, go for it. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up. All right. Well, you know where to check me out. Ricky Rochelle. I'm in the Young Rochelles. I'm in the New Rochelles. We covered uh, Animal Boy, the Ramones album in full. If you haven't heard that, go check it out. Everything's streaming everywhere. And uh, just an honor and a pleasure to be here with you, Deeds. And uh, everybody be good. Have a happy new year in 2022. Right on, man. Well, thanks again and take care. All right. Bye now.